We will turn to another parliamentarian, uh, an elected official, uh, who has been doing a lot of work to demand a ceasefire amongst many, many other fantastic and good causes. We are very, very honored to be joined here once again by Savim Dagdalen, who is a Minister of Parliament in the Bundestag in Germany and a founder of the brand new party, the Sara Wagenacht Alliance for Reason and Fairness. Savim, thanks so much for being back with us. Uh, thanks for having me, Hoisin. Thank well, you. you're Thank making you. a lot of <laughs> well, you're making a lot of news. I've seen you all over uh, the the media in the UK, everywhere, because the new party that you have helped form is a, really a political earthquake there in Germany. Uh, tell us, maybe just to start, you know, why you felt the need to to be part of founding a new party in Germany and what you're hoping it can do for the politics uh, there in your country. Yes, uh, I mean, in uh, Germany, we are living in a time of, I mean, not just in Germany, uh, worldwide global political crisis and more and more wars with more potential of escalation at this time for all times. Uh, the Federal Republic of Germany has the moment in its history, short-sighted and very incompetent. And more and more people in Germany no longer feel represented uh, by the establishment, by the political parties. They rightly feel that the government um, no longer represents their interests and that the established parties hardly differ on key political issues, both the three governmental parties, the Social Democrats, the Greens and the Liberals, but also the largest opposition party, the Conservative Christian Democrats, support a toxic policy mix of participating in U.S. proxy wars, uh, such as in Ukraine or in Gaza, implementing economic sanctions and rearmament while at the same time reducing social uh, spending and uh, actually uh, cutting uh, uh, social spending. So the consequences in Germany are a shrinking economy, poor infrastructure and exploding energy prices and inflation. And uh, that's why um, this unsettles many people. They don't know what to vote for or out of desperation, they turn to the right, to the right-wing parties. And we want to form a party because things can't go on as they are at the moment. Otherwise, we risk uh, that our country will no longer be recognizable in 10 years' time. So my former party, the left party, has also failed on the issue of peace and abandoned uh, its anti-war policies and positions and became a party of Yes, you can say progressive neoliberalism, like Nancy Fraser describes, together with a focus on identity politics rather than left-wing class politics, economic and social policy in the interest of the working class people. This strategy has led to one election defeat other, uh, uh, after another for years. And at the same time, the extreme right party is gaining strength. So the right-wing alternative for Germany is polling at over 20% nationwide, and even over 30% in some federal states in the east of Germany. So we believe that things cannot go on like this. That's why I left my former party, the left party, last October, together with nine other members of the German parliament to set up a new party, the Alliance Sarah Wagenknecht, for reason and justice. And our pro uh, program has four pillars so first of all, our first important goal is we want economic policy of reason and for the preservation of economic strengths. So especially the economy in, in Germany is very much dependent on the geopolitical interests of the U.S. I, I just want to um, say that, for example, the sanctions, the economic warfare against Russia the energy sanctions, they hit us, the German, uh, uh, the German economy, and the U.S. economy is uh, benefiting from this. So that's why we need more, uh, more reasonable economy policy. Uh, we need a return to reason, especially in economic policy, because Germany is a country poor in raw materials and strong in experts. So a large part of prosperity depends on industrial value creation so that why that's why I think we we need the cheap energy again from Russia and we are in favor of um, of the reparation of the pipeline um, to uh, to Russia and uh, uh, again 
uh, getting uh, cheap gas, cheap energy from Russia for our uh, for our economy. Secondly, our country needs social equality, more social justice should be at the top of the political agenda. This is our second aim. And the thirdly, it is a major mistake that the government, the German government, has turned away from the important tradition of détente to which Germany owes its reunification and no longer relies on mediation, balancing interests and diplomacy, but instead it's playing the military card in more and more conflicts around the world. So we believe conflicts and wars Uh, as those in Ukraine and in the Middle East, in Gaza, cannot be resolved militarily. So that's why it needs a strong political force that consistently promotes peace, diplomacy, and negotiated uh, solution. And fourthly, this is my last point, a major concern is to widen the corridor of opinions again. Um, like, you know, we want to stop the cancel culture. What is a poison for democracy? We must uh, uh, protect the freedom of speech. It's just the way debates are conducted where anyone who does not agree with the mainstream opinion bubble is quickly defamed. And this is unworthy for a democracy and it's poison for our democracy. And uh, according to surveys, for example, almost half of the population in Germany no longer dares to speak their mind openly outside of a protected space. And I think this is the poison for democracy. That's why... We, our fourth uh, pillar is uh, freedom, freedom of speech. And uh, this is why we are now <laughs> heeding this weekend uh, to our founding party conference that will take place in uh, Berlin, attended by 450 members all over Germany, as well uh, as 100 guests and 100 journalists. And um, according to a very lately survey, around 17% in Germany would like to see Our chairwoman, Sarah Wagenknecht, as a chancellor, I think um, we, this is a good, good power party. Mm -hmm. Savim, I, uh, I appreciate you breaking all that down. And I feel like there's so many parallels to a lot of the problems we have in the U.S., at least in U.S. politics, um, in terms of the sort of narrow confines of what's allowed in the mainstream of Absolutely. progressive politics. Uh, and you mentioned something in particular, and that's kind of bringing back anti-war politics uh, to the left. And, and that's so important. And we, we have that missing in the U.S. as well. You talked a bit about the Ukraine uh, proxy war. I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about the position that your party has on uh, Israel's destructive uh, war in Gaza Uh, and obviously Germany is, as a country, is very much not just in support of Israel's genocide there, but is, is in many ways a participant in giving so much legal and diplomatic cover and, of course, constantly aiding Israel and, and, and whatever it asks for, all in service of supposedly making up for Germany's past crimes uh, when, when Germany was, you know, a Nazi country and carried out the Holocaust. So can you talk a bit about your party's position on Gaza? Well, um, I think, first of all, the mass protest for a ceasefire in Gaza in numerous European countries, for example, in the UK or the large German demonstrations for peace in Ukraine show that there is a popular dissatisfaction with Europe's and Germany's foreign policy of unconditional submission to the U.S. hegemonic policy, supporting all these U.S. proxy wars. And um, so the, the establishment is coming under increasing pressure on these issues And our party is actually, we are the only party in the German parliament which is in favor of a ceasefire in Gaza, in Israel and Palestine, in the Middle East. Uh, and uh, yeah, the alliance, Sarah Wankech in Germany, is the only party in the German parliament to speak out in favor of a ceasefire in Gaza and to call for an end uh, to German arm deliveries uh, to Israel because Uh, Germany is, uh, after the United States and United Kingdom, the third largest arms supplier mm -hmm. for Israel. And I think this is shameful. This is very, uh, this is scandal. Uh, and, um, but it also, also shows regarding Gaza and Ukraine, in principle, Europe must become an independent player instead of being a pawn in the conflict between the major powers and a vessel to the United States. And this also applies, as I said, with regard to the Middle East conflict. Mm. 
Well, I'm glad uh, you mentioned that because you've also been working on a worldwide level of this concerns. You're working with, well, many people now, but uh, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar here in the United States to rally parliamentarians around the, the whole globe for a ceasefire. Talk about that initiative and why it was important for you to reach across national borders in order to wage this uh, fight. Well, uh, in view of the suffering in the region and especially of the people in Gaza and the West Bank, I believe there is no alternative to an immediate ceasefire. And I know a ceasefire is not everything, but without a ceasefire is everything nothing. And that is why at a meeting in Washington last December, I decided together with Ilhan Omar to initiate a global call by parliamentarians for a ceasefire in Gaza. And our global call is now supported by over 520 parliamentarians, elected MPs from more than 30 countries. And together we call for an immediate multilateral ceasefire in Israel and Palestine, the release of all remaining Israeli and international hostages and the facilitation of humanitarian aid to Gaza, and we call for respect for international law, uh, not only the international law, but also uh, for the persecution of serious human rights violation. And the support is politically very broad and international. Our aim is uh, to further increase international pressure for an end to the war and a political solution. And I think more than 10,000 Palestinians have already died as a result of this Israel's and ruthless warfare following the Hamas massacre on October the 7th. So we want to call on our governments to put an end to this horror. And by supporting the Israeli warfare, the West shares responsibility for the mass murder of Palestinians. And Savim, I'm just curious, you know, uh, a lot of what you're talking about is quite controversial in the German mainstream, as you know. So how has your new party and its program been uh, greeted, <laughs> been received by, uh, by, by Germany, if at all? It's, are, you re are they even giving you attention? Oh, the attention is uh, the attention is very big. Uh, so we, we we get really thousands of uh, supporters. A lot of people wants to join us, but we are very very careful at the moment. We want to we want to um, grow very slow and very controlled because uh, I think we we have to watch who wants to uh, be a member of our party. Is he uh, supporting 100% our program or is he thinking very differently on, on the four pillars I described? Uh, so reasonable economic policy for peace policy uh, against the cancel culture and so on and in favor of social justice. So we are very, uh, very concerned about uh, the growth of our party. So that's why it's controlled and it's very slow. And the attention, the media attention is uh, big. And... Um, for example, at the first press conference, Sarah Wagenknecht called Gaza uh, uh, a living, uh, a, a free uh, prison uh, for the Palestinians and uh, as a prison. And uh, some uh, media wanted to uh, uh, attack us because we, we've used this term. But, you know, uh, even the senator of the Democrats, uh, Bernie Sanders, is using this term and even the UN, uh, UN special reporters are using this term. So I think they, uh, at the moment, they are watching, they are observing, they are waiting because everyone is very much concerned about the rise of the right-wing party, the Alternative for Germany, uh, which is a party for the very rich people. It's an uh, uh, anti-working uh, class party. It's a militarist party. It is in favor of drone strikes. It is in favor of interventions, military interventions. It's in favor of armament, the 2% uh, goal of the NATO. It's a NATO party, pro-NATO party. So uh, I think we, we have to really challenge them as what they are, a militaristic uh, party for the industrial uh, uh, complex, the military industrial complex in Germany. And um, and there is a slight, a slight, um, likeliness and uh, chance that we as the Alliance Sarah Wagenknecht could combat and stop the rise of this far-right party. And this is why I think the attention is very, very big at the moment. Mm -hmm. 
Well, certainly I think our attention is very focused on this, and there are many people around the world who I think are very excited to see this take place. So we're very, very honored to have had you with us again. Savim Dagdalen, a representative of the BSW party in the Bundestag in Germany. Thanks so much for being with us here on the Freedom Side. Thanks for having me, and keep up the good work. Mm, thank you.